guys, it's Alicia and welcome back to my channel. Today, I am going to talk about what I read in the month of March. So, a month ago, you know, because that's how TBR and wrap-ups work, I set myself a March TBR and I told myself I wasn't going to be strict with it because, as you can see in the video, I explained about a condition that plagues me. So, with that condition comes the fact that I can't really set TBRs for myself. But, I decided there was a bunch of stuff I needed to read and a bunch of stuff I needed to get to. So I was like, you know what? Why not? We're going to punch through. We're going to see if I can do it. So let's see what I read in the month of March and let's see if I can now say that I can stick to TBRs. Here we go. The first book that I finished in the month of March, I was actually reading in February, and I talked about it in my February wrap-up, but I wasn't sure if I was going to finish it. I ended up not being able to finish it in the month of February, so I just finished it in March. And that was A Passionate Hope by Jill Eileen Smith, and I rated this a 3.5 out of 5 stars. This has probably been one of my lowest ratings ever. I have to say, I rate pretty high. Um, I enjoy most of the stuff that I read just because I read what I like and like what I read. Anyways, that's a whole other story. But this is the first book that I read by this author and it wasn't anything I had against the author. I just wasn't a fan of how this story was portrayed. This is biblical fiction and this is Hannah's story. And I love the story of Hannah and I've always wished that there was a biblical fiction take on it and I don't read much biblical fiction I kind of wish I, I want to read more of it but I went ahead and I tried it and I just it took me a very very long time to read this like way longer than it should have taken me and I just I wasn't a fan the characters were super super whiny in my opinion and I there's nothing I can't stand more than a whiny character like, I can put up with a lot of stuff in my books, but whiny characters, if they don't make a quick turnaround, I'm not a fan. So I was just kind of struggling with this, and, like, there were some redeeming aspects, I guess. Again, I love the story, and I understand that some of these characters were probably similar to this in the Bible. There were some very evil characters, but I just, I don't know. It didn't really click with me. I wasn't a huge fan, sadly. So The next book that I read is A Heart Most Certain by Miss Melissa Jaggers. And this was on my TBR. It was a book that I wanted to get to. And I rated this a 4.75 out of 5 stars. I loved the characters. I loved being in this town and actually seeing the town for the first time. I read two novellas by her that are technically a part of this series, but they don't really hit on the town. They're just kind of there. So it was really nice to enter Teville for the first time in a full-length novel. I loved the characters. It was really cute. I got some like Beauty and the Beast type feels from it. I don't know, there was just something about it. It was very fairy tale-esque. And I love Melissa's style. She's so sweet and just everything is just so pure and just mm, like honey straight from the comb. It's just so sweet. I love it. And the color is beautiful. Very cute. I liked it. Yes. The next book I read was technically two in one, but it was more like the the edition that I have. And that was Edenbrook with the Heir to Edenbrook novelette, which is actually like a short story. Like it's very, very short. Edenbrook itself is the full story, it's like the full book. And I rated that a 4.75 out of 5 stars. I really enjoyed it. I just want to thank everybody who recommended this book. Um, thank you to my wonderful friend Rachel for sending me this book and sending me Blackmore and just for pushing me to read it. I've been wanting to read it. I just, again, talked about this, 
took me forever. So thankful that I finally read it because I loved it. And after I like started reading it, I kept seeing people talking about reading it. And it was so cute. It was a great, sweet, clean romance. And this is told from first person, so I think that's kind of what brought my rating down, like that 0.25%. <laughs> Because I would have loved to see this in third person and like see an outside view instead of just seeing the perspective of the lead girl. Even though it was wonderful, it was a beautifully written story. Such a sweet romance. It was, it was great. I loved it. I just would have loved to see the whole picture because now I want the whole picture and like I'm not going to get it. And that just kind of like hurts. moments when you just want to cry because you're not going to get any more of the story. Yeah, it's one of those. And then Heir to Edenbrook I loved because we get Philip's perspective. And, oh, yes. I If I could have Edenbrook told from his perspective, I would literally be the happiest girl in the world. Like, I would buy all of the books and send them to people. It was so good. Loved seeing it from his perspective and it was just cruel to be 55 pages long and just like tease me. You know, she just teased and she poked and she teased. It just wasn't fair. But I'm thankful for the little tiny portion that we got of his story, some before, and a tiny, tiny bit of the beginning of Eden Brook from his perspective. It was great. Overall, I rated the book a 5 out of 5 star, the, like the whole collection, this edition. Gorgeous, loved it, and I'm so, so thankful and so happy that I finally read it. And thank you to everybody who recommended it because there were so many people who love it. If you haven't read it, read it, please. The next book that I read was True to You by Becky Wade. This was the first book that I've ever read by Becky, and honestly, I was a little disappointed just because of the hype I heard about her books, and it was cute, don't get me wrong, I rated it a 4 out of 5 star, um, but I feel like I rated it more, like I rated it higher because of the second hand characters and the, the smaller characters. Um, I loved Willow, and I loved um, Britt, and I cannot wait for their stories, which I believe Willow's story comes out this, like, in a couple months, or is it Britt's story? I think it's Willow's story. And I'm super, super excited to read those. Like, I want to read those, and that's why I enjoyed it. I wasn't really a huge fan of Nora. I wasn't a huge fan of John. Is that his name? I wasn't a huge fan of John. They just weren't memorable characters. I loved what Nora did. It was really cool. It was a cool occupation. But it was just like a really fast, she saw him and then she was instantly in love. And normally those don't bother me, but there was just something about this one. And it didn't bother me per se. It just, eh. Like it was mediocre. Like I wasn't in love with it. I didn't hate it. It was just kind of okay. And that's just kind of a bummer. Like I would rather love a book or just hate a book than it just be like, eh, like it wasn't anything memorable. But I will continue. I have other books by Becky and I will read them. I really, really enjoyed her writing style. I think it was just this story in particular that wasn't really for me. But I am excited to read the rest in the series as well as her previous series. So there's that. There is hope for me, I promise. I'm not saying no to this author. I just, this story, meh, hit or miss, but the cover is beautiful. So I will give all the stars for the cover. It's gorgeous. The next book that I read in the month of March is actually an ebook. I got it for a review. I reviewed it on the blog. And that is A Second Chance, which is an Oaktown story by Jenny Lynn. And I rated this a 4 out of 5 stars. It is the first installation to a series that this author is going to be writing. I believe book 2 comes out soon. And I'm excited to pick it up because she leaves us on a cliffhanger. It is a short book. 
150 or so pages so it's beautifully written I writ written I really liked seeing the characters and more than anything I'm really excited to see where the story goes and you know what else can unfold because a lot of stuff happened in the first book uh, there is a great best friend to boyfriend trope again love that trope um, love seeing it so there was history already there but I feel like a lot is going to unfold in the rest of the series and I'm just really excited to see it it was a very quick cute enjoyable read the next book that I read was Out of the Ordinary by Jen Toronto and this was in fact on my TBR <sighs> Okay, let me start out by saying this. I love Jen, and I loved the book. I really, really did. But there was a lot of hype surrounding this book when it came out a couple months ago, and there was just a lot of chatter saying that this was her funniest book to date, and it's like, don't eat, don't drink, go to the bathroom before you read it, get tissues, like, don't be by anybody. You're going to be snorting, rolling on the floor. Like, those were things that I had been hearing from people. And knowing her past works and knowing how hard I laugh, I was crazy excited. Like, there's not even a word to describe how excited I was. I had so much anticipation. I was just like, yes. And I kept like putting it off because I have a condition about putting off books that I know are going to be great. So I put this one off and then honestly it fell a little short in the humor department to me. Now don't get me wrong, it's still funny, I still laughed, I still really, really, really enjoyed it. I loved seeing Gertrude and Harrison, love Harrison so much. I just. I loved the book, I did, but it just wasn't her funniest to date, in my opinion. So I think that was my fault going in with expectations and thinking things were going to happen and then being disappointed when they didn't. That being said, I loved Gertrude. I connected with her. I haven't really connected with a character like her in a while. I loved her so much. Um, she was full figured. I just I, I love that. She thought she was ordinary, and you know I just I loved the lines running through this where all her friends and everybody was trying to push her as well as God was pushing her to live an extraordinary life. Like you're not ordinary. God put you there for a purpose. He made you for a purpose. Your life is extraordinary no matter what you do, and I just really really love that connected like I just I loved this book and Harrison was amazing Lord send me a Harrison Sinclair like he was great because he was just so clueless and it was just but he was still so sweet and I just I loved him and I just thought about this great thought people um it could have also you know not have been as funny for me because I took it so seriously like a lot of these aspects were really applying to me and so I probably didn't look for the light read that it normally is because it was a little heavier in my opinion just for me so it could have just been personal time and stuff I'm sure if I read it again I will die laughing because it's Jen and I love Jen and just it was great it was a 4.5 out of 5 stars and I cannot wait for the next book. So excited. Oh, I'm so, so excited. Yes. The next book I read was called As Easy as Riding a Bike by Belle Renshaw. And I believe I've talked about her books on the videos before. If not, I've talked about her on my blog. Blogged about it. Continue to. I'm actually on her street team. And... I love her like she's great she's working so hard like I admire her so much she's just pumping story after story out while still trying to be active on social media and yes she goes through stages where she kind of falls off the grid but like 
I would probably just be in my own little bubble if I ever wrote. And on top of all of this and pumping all these stories out, they're good. Like, really good. <laughs> she has two out right now and she's working on three and four, I believe, as well as multiple others. But, like, she has plans for these books and they're just coming out. And they're beautifully done and it's literally Hallmark on paper. So, if you love Hallmark movies because I'm all about the cheesy Hallmark movies, give me Christmas all year round, give me cheesy all year round, I love it. I love her books. So this one, anyways, on to the actual portion of this. Beautiful cover, so cute. And this is book one in her Justin Harbour series. It's based on Connor and Emma and again the best friend to boyfriend trope. Love it! Connor is a photographer and he leaves and then years later he comes home to Justin Harbour and I loved it because I have great memories of the show Murder She Wrote. I watched it with my mom growing up and even though like watching it now it's super cheesy, super you know just kind of outdated and stuff, I still have great memories of it. So anytime I read anything with a harbor, like fishing town setting, I just instantly connect with it because it just reminds me of my amazing memories with my mom and watching Murder, She Wrote. And just, you know, that's me. I loved it. Um, but I was, I just felt like I was instantly in this town, this itty bitty town that was actually a tourist stop when things got busy and I loved all the second secondary characters. I'm so excited that it's a series and I'm excited about book two because we get to see the baker and just all the things. I'm just really, really excited and I don't, I don't know. I just really loved it. I loved Connor. I loved Emma. I loved their banter. I loved seeing a different side to descriptive and imagination since her first book was a Christmas book, but no matter, like, she kept a steady pace even though it was a short book. It was just beautifully written. I rated it a 4.5 out of 5 stars and I just, she is amazing. She's talented for sure. And the last book that I read in the month of March was A Search for Refuge by Christiane Hunter. And I rated this a 4 out of 5 stars. I posted my review on the blog last week. We started it out with like this ridiculously long story. If you haven't read it yet, you should because it's sweet, heartfelt, and I loved being able to kind of talk about Christy for a second and how I came across her books. I've loved the work that I've read from Christy, like she's a favorite author, and I was so excited to find out about A Search for Refuge and her new series, Haven Manor, and I just, it was beautiful. I was so excited to read it. I loved, again, the secondary characters. I think that's amazing in a first book when you fall in love with the secondary characters because that means you're going to love seeing them progress throughout the story. I also loved the two main characters. It was sweet, it was cute. It wrapped up nicely. It was a short read. It was a novella, so it happened quickly. But I really enjoyed it. And I liked seeing determined, strong lead characters. I love seeing it done so beautifully. And Christy always does an amazing job. And I loved the yellow cloak that she talks about. I just I love when there's crazy colors. Like, just, I don't know. I just like it. I don't, I don't know. I can't really explain it, but I really did enjoy the story and I'm so excited for Kit's story. And I kind of feel like a potato because I read the whole book, but I did not read the defense of honor like portion that they gave because I don't want to spoil it like I just want to read it from the beginning but she says that the next book that's coming out is Jess's story and who on earth is Jess somebody please if you've read the book please tell me because I feel 
like a little potato in the ground living under the dirt because I don't know and I feel like I'm missing something. Like I read the book and I do not remember a Jess. So what am I missing? Somebody please help me. Thank you. Because I'm just excited about the series regardless. It doesn't matter who this person is. I'm sure I will love the character. But I'm just saying I would really love to know who it is before the book comes out. I read a total of nine books in the month of March. It's crazy. Three of them being ebooks, which also, again, kind of crazy since I hardly ever read ebooks. I prefer physical copies. And I believe that the only book I did not read for my March TBR was Brazen, which was the nonfiction pick of the month. And I just, I didn't read any of it. I didn't pick it up. But I'm still hoping to try and get to it this year hopefully in April we'll see no promises again it was kind of loose I'm very proud of myself for sticking to the books that I read but on top of it reading more than I thought that I would read and yeah I'm just very proud of myself guys I can stick to a TBR and still read other books it probably also helps that my TBR wasn't super ambitious. I picked like books that I knew I wanted to read and just made sure that I sat down and forced myself to read them. Even though I wasn't really forcing myself because once I got started I just finished them pretty quick. But regardless, I'm very proud of myself. I feel like March blew by. I did not realize I read that many books. I just thought I read four and I just felt bad like I didn't read anything. But I'm proud of myself. I'm proud that I stuck to a TBR. Guys, I did it! <laughs> I hope you enjoyed seeing my video of what I read. I hope you guys believed in me because I'm not sure if I really believed in myself, I'm not going to lie. I was a little worried there for a little bit. As I talked about, I reviewed quite a few of these books on my blog, which is for the love of Christian fiction .blogspot.com, where my reviews are up every single Friday. And you can also follow my Instagram, which is for the love of Christian fiction, where I've also featured some of these beautiful book covers there. And I'm also kind of like, um, getting a schedule going. And it's not just once a week, guys. We're getting good at this whole thing. Sort of, kind of. <laughs> all my other links are in the description box below if you'd like to check out my full reviews on all these books. Goodreads. Down there. I... Again, I really hope you guys enjoyed this. I probably won't be setting myself an April TBR, but we'll see what I read in April's wrap-up. I hope you guys were looking forward to this as much as I was, because I was excited to see what I read. Anyways, yeah. I think that's it. I think. <laughs> I'll see you guys next week. Bye!